Hi, I'm Ab Cisse. In this episode of Leveling Up Your Lighting, we're gonna discuss shooting fitness photography. How I lift the image taking advantage of fast flash duration, what you need for your athlete to be safe and prevent injury, and the overall creative direction behind the images. I'm really excited about these images. First, let's talk about the lighting. It doesn't get any more simple than this setup. I kept it so that you could do this with a speed light if you wish. I'm using one bare bulb and another with a large umbrella with a sock. That's it. I'm using a bare bulb flash because when shooting movement, it's great when your subjects don't have to be dialed into a very tight mark. When the light is even throughout your set, it gives them room to move and not be overly worried about their lighting. The farther I pull the light back, the more even across my set it's going to become and really start to give me the effect of sunlight. Well, you may be thinking that their bare bulb is my key light and the large umbrella is my fill. Well, this is only kind of right. They both play many roles. Here, the bare bulb is my key light and it is also the key light here, but now it's my rim light. Don't just stand in one place. I remember about seven years ago, I was doing a shoot and I remember staying pretty much in the same place. Then I saw the images my hairstylists and stylists were getting from their smartphones and their images were low key, better angles than I got. I said never again. Now, once I get my light set, I shoot from every possible angle to make sure there is not something that I'm missing. Making every light your main light if you can and see what happens. You may be surprised. I'm a firm believer that any well-placed light gives you the opportunity for another image. Now for some technical aspects for my lighting. First, I'm keeping my flash duration with a T1 above 1 3,000th of a second. I measure this with the Sekonic L858. Think of this like shooting with a shutter speed of roughly 1 3,000th of a second. On a wider lens, I want to shoot at f8 or above when shooting motion to make sure I get my subject in focus and to capture peak action. I manually focus and pre-focus where my subject is going to end up. If I'm going to shoot at shallower apertures like f2.8, I'd make sure their motion was just up and down and not moving away or towards the camera. And if I was really worried, I'd be at like f16. I also never use a motor drive in these scenarios because I just don't find the need to, and it just generates unnecessary images. But if I only had one opportunity to get the shot, well then the motor drive may be the best way to go. Some athletes will limit how many jumps they give you and everyone has a limit, whether they say so or not. Creative direction is one of the conversations that needs to be talked about before gear. I chose a gold theme because it is the color of champions and I just got my hands on a very limited batch of Gravity Backdrops Lindsay Adler Signature Series Gold Backdrops. Less than 50 of these are in existence as of the making of this video. Each is hand painted. I then chose a bunch of gold props. I purchased a pair of gold shoes from Puma, a gold baton, and gold wrist cuffs to put on the battle ropes to better tie them in. I went with a braided hairstyle to keep with the training theme, but it also guaranteed her hair wasn't gonna be in her face if we got the perfect pose. I'll also show the athletes mood boards and find what poses they are comfortable with, and then really work on dialing them in until both of us are happy with the final result. Make sure you give time for your talent to look at the shots as well, to help them make micro adjustments as needed. When you are starting out, and still working on the photography technique, remember that creative direction and concept are always king. Now, the most important part of this video is safety. First, make sure you give ample time for the athlete to warm up. It will help prevent injury and get you better movement. Next, make sure the wardrobe does not restrict movement and the shoes are a perfect fit. Buy multiple sizes and return what isn't a perfect fit and ask them to even bring their own as backup and give time to rest between poses when needed. Now for the set. I wanna make sure the canvas backdrop I'm using on the floor doesn't slip. So I'm using a non-slip rug mat under the backdrop. I like to get one equal or larger in size to be extra safe. This is much safer than using tape especially since we will be doing a lot of poses with our athlete pushing off with a lot of force. It makes sure the canvas backdrop on the floor doesn't budge. I also propped a V-flat behind our model for this shot. I wanted her leaning against the backdrop to make this pose feel a little bit more easy and more natural and to make sure that there were no wrinkles in the backdrop. I do get asked a lot about why not use a motor drive. And I think with time, you simply get the timing of your athlete. I prefer not to do a countdown, but to simply get a rhythm for how they move and anticipate the action versus thinking about a countdown. But at sometimes, 
people will ask you to count down and I simply listen and we'll do a countdown, but hope that throughout the shoot, we're able to build a rhythm. Remember, it's not all about f-stops and shutter speeds, but the idea and direction you put in behind the shot. I hear so many photographers say they just wanna see what happens and they have no plan behind their shoots. But when working with clients, it's better to have a plan and pivot versus trying everything on the fly. If you'd like to see more videos taking you behind the scenes with the creative process, as well as the details of execution, such as safety and direction, I'd love to do dance photography next. So comment below, dance no matter what. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to see content just like this. My name is Ab Cisse, and as you know, they're levels to you.